Shabbat Shalom everybody and welcome to today's Torah portion. Our, today's Torah portion is called T Ki Tavo, when you come in. But before we begin our reads, I'm going to say our customary blessing. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people Israel. May we and our offspring, and the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who chooses us from all the nations and gave, gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May Yahuwah bless you and keep watch over you. May Yahuwah make his presence enlighten you and may he be kind to you. May he bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Shalom. Bashim Yahushua. Amen. Today's Torah is Deuteronomy 26, 1 through 29, 9, 8. Prophets, Isaiah 6, 1 through 22. Brit Shadesha, Hadesha, Matthew, 30, Matthew 13, 1 through 23, Luke 21, 1 through 4, 23, 26 through 56, Acts 7, 30 through 53, Acts 28, 17 through 31, and Romans 11, 1 through 24. Deuteronomy 26. When you come into the land that Yahweh your Elohim has given you for an inheritance, and you have taken possession of it and live in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest, harvest from your land that Yahweh your Elohim has given you, and you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place that Yahweh your Elohim will choose to make his name and dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in the office at the time and say to him, I declare today to Yahweh your Elohim that I have come into the land that Yahweh has sworn to our fathers to give to us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of Yahweh your Elohim. You shall make response before Yahweh your Elohim a wandering Aramean was my father. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there. Few in number, and there he became a nation, great and mighty and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliate, humiliated us and laid on us hard labor. And when we cried to Yahweh, the Elohim of our fathers, and Yahweh heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression, and Yahweh brought us out of, of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with great deeds and of terror with signs and wonders and he brought us into this place and gave us his land a land flowing with milk and honey and behold now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground which you O Yahuwah have given me and you shall set it down before Yahuwah your Elohim and worship before Yahuwah your Elohim and you shall rejoice in all the good that Yahuwah your Elohim has given to you and to your house you and the Levite and the sojourner who is among you When you have finished paying all the tithes of your produce in the third year, which is the year of tithing, give it to the Levite, the sojourner, and the fatherless, and the widow, so that they may eat within your towns and be filled. Then you shall say before Yahweh your Elohim, I have removed this sacred portion out of my house, and moreover I have given it to the Levite, the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow, according to your commandments that you have commanded me. I have not transgressed any of your commandments, nor have I forgotten them. I have not eaten of the tithe while I was mourning, or removed any of it while I was unclean, or offered any of it to the dead. I have obeyed your voice, Yahuwah, my Elohim. I have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people Israel and the ground that you have given us as you swore to our fathers a land flowing with milk and honey.
This day Yahweh your Elohim commands you to do these statutes and, ru and rules. You shall therefore be careful to do them with all your heart and with all your soul. You have declared today Yahweh is your Elohim and that you will walk in his ways and keep his statutes and his commandments and his rules and, and will obey his voice. And Yahweh has declared today that you are a people for his treasured possession as he has promised and that you are to keep all his commandments and that he will set you in praise and in fame and your honor high above the nations that he has made and that you shall be a people holy to Yahweh your Elohim as promised. Now Moses and the elders of Israel commanded the people saying keep the whole commandment that I obey that I command you today and on the day you cross over the Jordan to the land that Yahweh your Elohim has given you, you shall set up large stones and plaster them with pl plaster them with plaster. And you shall write on them all the words of this law. And when you cross over to enter the land that Yahweh your Elohim has given you, a land flowing with milk and honey, as Yahweh your the Elohim of your fathers has promised you. And when you have crossed over the Jordan, you shall set up three stones, concerning which I command you today on Mount Ebal. And you shall plaster them with plaster. And there you shall build an altar to Yahweh your Elohim, an altar of stones. You shall wield no iron tool on them. You shall build an altar to Yahweh your Elohim of uncut stones, and you shall offer burnt offerings on it to Yahweh your Elohim. And you shall sacrifice peace offerings, and shall eat there. And you shall rejoice before Yahweh your Elohim, and you shall write on the stones all the words of this law very plainly. Then Moses and the Levitical priests said to Israel, Keep silence and hear, O Israel, this day you have become the people of Yahweh your Elohim. You shall therefore obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim, keeping his commandments and his statutes which I command you today. That day Moses charged the people, saying, When you have crossed over the Jordan, these shall stand on Mount Jerizim to bless the people, Simeon, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. And these shall stand on Mount Ebal for the curse, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. And the Levites shall declare to all the men of Israel in a loud voice, Cursed be the man who makes a carved or cast metal image an abomination to Yahweh, a thing made by the hands of a craftsman, and sets, up, sets it up in secret, and all the people shall answer him and say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who dishonors his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who moves his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who misleads a blind man on the road, and all the people shall say Amen. Cursed be anyone who perverts the justice due to the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow, and all the people shall say Amen. Cursed be anyone who lies with his father's wife because he has uncovered his father's nakedness, and all the people shall say Amen. Cursed be anyone who lies with any kind of animal. And all that people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who lies with his sister, whether the daughter of his father or the daughter of his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who lies with his mother-in-law, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who strikes down his neighbor's neighbor in secret, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who takes a bribe to shed innocent blood, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be anyone who does not confirm the words of this law by doing them, and all the people shall say, Amen. And if you face, faithfully obey the, obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim, be careful to do all His commandments that I command you today. Yahweh your Elohim will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If you obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be your fruit of your womb, and the fruit of the ground, and the fruit of your cattle, and increase the increase of your herds, and the young of your flock. Blessed be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed you shall be when you go out. Yahweh will cause your enemies to rise against you 
to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Yahweh will, will command the blessings on you and your barns and all that you undertake. And he will bless you in the land that Yahweh your Elohim has given you. Yahweh will establish you as a people holy to himself. As he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of Yahweh, and they shall be afraid of you. And Yahweh shall, Yahweh will make you abound in prosperity, in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your ground, within the land that Yahweh has sworn to your fathers to give you. Yahweh will open to you his good treasury, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season, and to bless the work of all your hands, and you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And Yahweh will make you the head and not the tail, and you shall only go up and not down, if you obey the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim, and I com which I command you today, being careful to do them. And if you do not turn aside from any of the word that I command you today to do the right hand to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. But if you will not obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim or be careful to do all his commandments and his statutes that I command you today, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Curse shall be shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in a field, cursed shall you shall be your basket and your kneading bowl, cursed shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground and the increase of your herds and the young of your flock, cursed shall you be when you come in and cursed shall you be when you go out. Yahweh will send on you curses, confusion and frustration in all that you undertake to do until you are destroyed and perish quickly on account of the evil of your deeds because you have forsaken me. Yahweh will make the pestilence stick to you until he has consumed you off the land that you are entering to take possession of it. Yahweh will strike you with wasting disease and with fever, inflammation and fiery heat, and with drought, and with blight and with mildew. They shall pursue you until you perish, and the heavens over your head shall be bronze, and the earth under you shall be iron. Yahweh will make the rain of your land powder. From heaven dust shall come down on you until you are destroyed. Yahweh will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You shall not go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. Yo, oh, you shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. And you shall be a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth, and your dead body shall be food for the birds of the air and for the beasts of the earth, and there shall be no one to frighten them away. Yahweh will strike you with the boils of Egypt and with the tumors and scabs and itch of which cannot be healed. Yahweh will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of mind. And you shall grope at noonday as the blind man grope in darkness, and you shall not prosper in your ways, and you shall be only oppressed and robbed continually, and there shall be no one to help you. <coughs> you shall betroth a wife, but another man shall ravish her. You shall build a house, but you shall not dwell in it. You shall plant a vineyard, but you shall not enjoy its fruits. Your ox shall be slaughtered before your eyes, but you shall not eat any of it. Your donkey shall be seized before your face, but shall not be restored to you. Your sheep shall be given to your enemies, but there shall be no one to help you. Your sons and your daughters shall be given to other people, while your eyes look on and fail with longing for them all day long, but you shall be helpless. A nation that you have not known shall eat up the fruit of your ground and all your labors, and you shall be only oppressed and crushed continually, so that you are driven mad by the sights that are in your eyes. Yahweh will strike you on the knees and on your legs with grievous boils for which you cannot be healed and from, from the sole of your foot to the crown of your head. Yahweh will bring you down, to bring you and your king whom you set over you to a nation that neither you nor your fathers have known and there you shall serve other gods of wood and stone. You shall become a horror, a proverb, 
and a byword among the people where Yahweh will lead you away. You shall carry much seed into the field and shall gather in little, for the locusts shall consume it. You shall plant vineyards and dress them, but you shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for <coughs> the worm shall eat them. You shall have olives, olive trees throughout all your territory, but you shall not anoint yourself with the oil, for your olives shall drop off and your... You shall follow sons and daughters, but they shall not be yours, for they shall go into captivity. The cricket shall possess all of your trees and the fruit on the ground. The sojourner who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. He shall lend to you, and you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. All the curses shall come upon you, and pursue you and overtake you till you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim to keep his commandments and his statutes that he commanded you they shall be a sign and a wonder against you and your offspring forever because you did not serve Yahweh your Elohim with joyfulness and gladness of heart because of the abundance of all things therefore you shall serve your enemies whom Yahweh will send against you in hunger and in thirst and nakedness and lacking everything and he will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. Yahweh will bring a nation against you from far away, from the end of the earth, swooping down like an eagle, a nation whose language you do not understand, a hard-faced nation, who shall not respect the old or show mercy to the young. It shall eat the offspring of your cattle and the fruit of your ground until you are destroyed. It also shall not leave you grain, wine, or oil. The increase of your herds or the young of your flocks until they have caused you to perish. They shall besiege you in all your towns until your high and fortified walls in which you trusted come down throughout all your land. And they shall besiege you in all your towns throughout all your land which Yahweh your Elohim has given you. And you shall eat of the fruit of your womb, the flesh of your sons and daughters whom Yahweh your Elohim has given you. In the siege and in the distress uh, with which your enemies shall distress you, the man who is the most tender and refined among you shall be begrudged food to his brother, to the wife he embraces, and to the last of the children whom he has left, so that he will not give to any of them any of the flesh of his children whom he is eating, because he has nothing else left. In the siege and in the distress with which your enemy shall distress you in all your towns, the most tender and refined woman among you who would not venture to set the sole of her foot on the ground because she is so delicate and tender, will begrudge to the husband she embraces, to her son and to her daughter. Her afterbirth that comes out from between her feet and her children she, whom she bears because lacking everything else, she will eat them secretly. In a siege and in the distress with which your enemy shall distress you in your towns. If you are not careful to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may fear this glorious and awesome name, Yahweh your Elohim, then Yahweh will bring on you and your offspring extraordinary afflictions, afflictions severe and lasting, and sicknesses grievous and lasting. And He will bring upon you again all the diseases of Egypt, of which you were afraid. And they shall cling to you. Every sickness also, in every affliction that is not recorded in a book of this law, Yahweh will bring upon you until you are destroyed. Whereas you were as numerous as a star of heaven, you shall be left few in number, because you did not obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim. And as Yahweh took delight in you, delight in doing you good and multiplying you, so also Yahweh will take delight in bringing ruin upon you and destroying you. And you shall be plucked off the land that you are entering to take possession of it. And Yahweh will scatter you among all peoples, from one end of the earth to the other. And there you shall serve other gods of wood and stone, with neither you nor your fathers have known. And among these nations you shall find no respect 
and there sh shall be no resting place for the sole of your foot, but Yahweh will give you there a trembling heart and failing eyes and a languishing soul. Your life shall bring in doubt before you. Night and day you shall be in dread and have no assurance of your life. In the morning you shall say, If only it were evening. And at evening you should say, If only it was morning. Because of the dread that your heart shall feel and the sights that your eyes shall see in Yahuwah will bring you back in ships to Egypt, a journey that I promise you should never make again. And there you shall offer yourselves for sale to your enemies as male and female servants, but there will be no buyer. These are the words of the covenant, go, covenant that Yahweh commanded Moses to make with the people of Israel in the land of Moab, beside the covenant that he had made with them at Horeb. And Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, You have seen all that Yahweh did before you in the eyes of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land, the great trials that your eyes saw, the signs and those great wonders. But to this day Yahweh has not given you a heart to understand or eyes to see or ears to hear. I have led you forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out on you. And your sandals have not worn off your feet. You have not eaten bread and you have not drunk wine or strong drink. That you may know that I am Yahweh your Elohim. And when you come to this place. Sihon the king of Heshbon and Og the king of Bashan. Came out against us to battle before we defeated them. We took their land and gave it for an inheritance to the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of the Manassites. Therefore keep the words of this covenant, covenant and do them, that you may prosper in all that you do. <clears throat> Isaiah 60, 1-22 Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of Yahweh has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples, but Yahweh will rise against you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up, the, lift up your eyes all around and see that they are gathered upon, that they are gathered together. They come to you. Your son shall come afar, and your daughter shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. His, your heart shall be thrill and exult, shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba, shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and they shall bring good news, the praise of Yahweh. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered to you. The rams of Nebahoth shall minister to you. They shall come up with acceptance to my altar, and I will beautify my beautiful house. Who are these that fly like a cloud, and like doves to their widows? windows? For the coastland shall hope for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your children from afar the silver and God with them, for the name of Yahweh your Elohim, and for the Holy One of Israel, because he has made you beautiful. Foreigners shall build up your walls. Foreigners shall build up their, your walls, and the king shall minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you, but in my favor I have mercy on you. Your gates shall be open continually. Day and night they shall not be shut, that people may bring to you the wealth of the nations, with their kings led in possession, procession. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Those nations shall be utterly laid waste. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you. The cypress and the plain and the pine and the people, the place in my sanct in the beautiful place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons of those who afflict you shall come bending low to you, and all who despise you shall bow down at your feet.
They shall call you the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, and no one passing through, I will make your majesty, you majestic forever a joy from age to age. You shall suck the milk of nations, and you shall nurse the breasts of kings, and you shall know that I, Yahweh, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold, and instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze. Instead of stone, iron. I will make your overseers peace, and your taskmasters righteousness. Violence shall be, no more be heard in your land, devastation or destruction within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun shall be no more, your light by day, nor for brightness shall the moon give you light. But Yahweh your Elohim, your everlasting light, will be your everlasting light, and your Elohim will be your glory. Your sun shall no more go down, nor your moon withdraw itself. For Yahweh will be your everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. Your people shall be of righteousness. They shall possess the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may might be glorified. The one, the least one, shall become a clan, and the smallest one a mighty nation. I am Yahweh. In its time, I will hasten it. <coughs> Matthew thirteen one through twenty three. That same day Yeshua went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowd, crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell among the good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Then the disciples came to him. Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, To you? It has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to the one who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. That is why, this is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing do they, they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, in their case the prophet, prophecy of Isaiah is filled, fulfilled. Thus says, uh, You will indeed hear, but never understand, and you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn, I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For truly I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what I see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and then tribulation or persecution arises on the account of the word and immediately falls away. 
As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in one, another sixty, and another forty. Sorry, thirty. Luke 21, 1 through 4. Yahshua looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw the poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he said, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. Luke 23, 26 through 56. And as they led him away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene. Cyrene. Who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Yeshua. And they... And there followed him a great multitude of people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Yeshua said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they sh will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and the hills, cover us. For if they do these things, when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Yeshua said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments, and the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is Ham Hamashiach of Elohim, his chosen one. The shoulders, soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hang, who were hang railed at him, saying, Are you not Hamashiach? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do not fear, Elohim, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Yeshua, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to them, Truly, said to him, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It is now the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. While the sun's light faded and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Yeshua, calling out in a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now, when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised Elohim, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for the spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returning home, beating their breasts, and all his acquaintances, and the woman and the women that had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man who had not consented to their decision and action. And he was looking for the kingdom of Elohim. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Yeshua. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone, 
where no one had ever been laid. It was a day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body, how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. Acts 7, 30 through 53. Now when forty years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, and a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight. And as he drew near to look, there came a voice from the Lord, I am Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. And Moses trembled and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off the sandals from your feet, for the place you are standing is holy ground. I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their groaning, and I have come down to deliver them, and now come, I will send you to Egypt. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? This man Elohim sent as both ruler and redeemer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. This man led them out, performing wonders and signs in Egypt, and at the Red Sea and in the wilderness for forty years. This is the Moses who said to the Israelites, Elohim will, rise, will raise you up, for you are a prophet like me from your brothers. This is the one who is in the congregation of the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him at Mount Sinai and with our fathers. He received living oracles to give us. Our fathers refused to obey him, but they thrust him aside, and in their hearts they turned to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make us gods who will go before us, and as for this Moses who led us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days, and offered a sacrifice to the idol, and were rejoicing in the works of their hands. But Elohim turned away and gave them over to worship the host of heavens, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you bring me slain beasts and sacrifices during the forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? You took up the tent of Moloch and the stars of your god Raphan. The images that you made to worship, and I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. Our fathers had led our fathers had the tent of witness in the wilderness, just as he who spoke to our Moses directed him to make it. According to the pattern that he had seen, our fathers in turn brought it in with, with Joshua, and they dispossessed the nations that Elohim drove out before our fathers, so that it was it was until the days of David who found favor in the sight of Elohim and asked to find a dwelling place for the Elohim of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. Yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made by hands, as the prophets say. Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hands make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you will always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. With which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the Righteous One, whom you, shall now whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the laws as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Acts 28.17-31 After three days he called together the local re leaders of the Jews, and when they had gathered he said to them, Brothers, though I had done nothing against our people or their customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. 
When they had examined me, they wished to set me at liberty, because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case, but because the Jews objected I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is because of the hope of Israel that I am wearing this chain. And I said to him, We have received no letters from Judea about you, and none of the brothers coming here has reported or spoken any evil about you. But we desire to hear from you what your views are. For with regard to this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. When they had appointed a day for him, they came to him at his lodging in great number. For morning, from morning till evening, he expounded to them, testifying to the kingdom of Elohim and trying to convince them about Yeshua, both from the law of Moses and from the prophets. And some were convinced by what he had said, but others disbelieved. And disagreeing amongst themselves, they departed after Paul and made one statement. The Holy Spirit was right in saying to your fathers through Isaiah the prophet, Go to this people and say, You will indeed hear but never understand, and you will indeed see but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. Therefore let it be known to you that this, sal that this salvation of Elohim has been sent to the Gentiles. They will listen. He lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of Elohim and teaching about the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach with all boldness and without hindrance Romans 11 1 through 24 I ask then has Elohim rejected his people by no means for I am an Israelite a descendant of Abraham a member of the tribe of Benjamin Elohim has not rejected his people whom he foreknew do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah how he appeals to Elohim against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have demolished your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what is Elohim's reply to him? I have kept for myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the, new, new, the knee to Baal, Baal. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant, chosen by grace. But if it is not by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. But if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. What then? Israel failed to obtain what it is seeking? The elect obtained it. But the rest were hardened, as it is written. Elohim gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes that would not see and ears that would not hear, down to this very day. And David says, Let their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a retribution for them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see, and bend their backs forever. So I asked, did they tremble in order that they might fall? By no means, rather through their trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles. So as to make Israel jealous. Now if their trespass means riches for the world, and if their failures mean riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? Now I am speaking to you Gentiles, and as much then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry, in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous, and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean? but life from the dead. If the dough offered as first fruits is holy, so is the whole lump. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others, and now shared in the nourishing root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant toward the branches. 
If you are, if you remember, it is not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. Then you will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. This is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief. But you, sta you stand fast through faith. So do not become proud, for, but fear. For Elohim did not spare the na natural branches, neither will he spare you. Note. Then the kindness and the severity of Elohim, severity toward those who have fallen, but Elohim's kindness to you, provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. And even they, if they do not continue in their un, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in. For Elohim has the power to graft them in again. If for if you were cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted back into their own olive trees? Okay. Okay. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, giver of the Torah. Bashim Yeshua. Amen. <laughs>